Hi, um, a Norfolk uh, scene in winter, snow covered, East Anglia in the UK. Um, I'm going to use a very limited palette of uh, Burnt Sienna, Payne's Grey, uh, Ultramarine uh, and hmm, uh, that might be it. A Will of God is a bit of a fence. <laughs> It's more or less based on a, an old Edward Seago type of scene, but um, I, I love Seago. You can learn a lot from studying these uh, painters in the 20th century, Edward Weston, Seago. Uh, the sky, I want to <laughs> keep fairly overcast, threatening. There's a bit of a stream going through here. And one of the devices with, with snow is to paint the the reflection of the water, the surface of the water, as very, very dark, as, as a contrast, to reflect the sky, so it won't be any blue in it. I want it to show up against the white. So now, we're going to have to show the shape of this white field area by use of shadows and and a bit of texturing with uh, uh, grass, grassy stuff, grassy uh, uh, foliage, just, just poking up through the through the, uh, the the snow and it will, will make it conform to a shape of the landscape although it's essentially flat uh, we'll see how we go I'll put a windswept tree in here a bit of a gauge a bit of a fence here but otherwise a very desolate sort of scene desolate lonely scene might even put a couple of figures in but the background flat background uh, we'll put some bluey some bluey greys and uh, some bits of warm but the warm is going to come from using the burnt sienna and also in the sky so wet in wet my new uh, number 10 sable brush hasn't arrived so I'm going to when it does I'm going to incorporate it into some of the paintings oh what's going on there and I was looking at the prices online of, of uh, sables and a Kalinsky Sable number ten, not the biggest. Number ten was 122 pounds, whatever that is in dollars. And the one I bought, so I was selling off uh, 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 ordinary sables, not Kalinsky, for another ten for seven pounds. I might not even like it when I get it. I can do most things with the hake anyway, but. It's nice to have a, to try something else, but if at the beginning you, you, you try the hake and then, then you watch me and then go off into a sable without mastering the, uh, the hake, you're, you won't get anywhere. It's like using all the, the colours that manufacturers produce rather than just a few. Get to know your materials and, and do everything you can with them. Learn how to mix your colours rather than than buy a ready mixed mixed tube green. Um, mix up your your greens in the way that we've been demonstrating. So this nice bit of sienna. Now I'm going to clean my brush, and I just want to just a, a gentle wash of burnt sienna across there. Just a tint the snow because the snow will reflect what's above it so that's that now we want to we've got a bit of a blue sky at the top so Payne's grey and lots of a bit of old, ultramarine so a darkish blue come across the top here and We'll put some clouds in over this in a minute. Right, I don't want this to come down too low. Now, Payne's grey, darker version of that on top. And we'll add a bit of light red in that. So a nice dark, bit of, bit of cloud in there. So that's my threatening cloud. A lot of snow in there ready to come down. Right, 
that's it, I won't do any more to that. Uh, I just want to straighten up my horizon, we've got a bit too much white there, so it's just... Right, okay. Give that a bit of a dry. I don't want the, uh, the the horizon to bleed into the wet too much. I want it. I want it slightly distinct, but I want it darkish. Darkish bluey grey. No, we'll just mm, needs to be thicker than that. This, this is this is the cold cold landscape here. Some trees on the edge there. Oh we'll go across. The North Norfolk is, is fairly hilly, it's not like the coastal area, which is flat. Round Cromer, that's where the, that's the highest point in East Anglia, as far as I remember. And it's all sand. Alright, a bit more in there. Norfolk is slowly sliding into the sea, sadly. Suffers from a lot of uh, coastal erosion with the sand. It can be quite wild in, in the uh, northeast coast. I just want to take that edge out there. It's, it's, it's bled a bit, a bit in the wet. And I don't really want that to come down into the landscape too much. I'm going to put some dark, some some warmer sienas in there. So just just warm up a bit of the horizon. Uh, just there we go. Can use a bit of paint grey with the with the sienna. Uh, just to put in some. This will stand for furrows, distance. Uh, across there. Okay, just as a bit of a rise on that horizon, and we can do some lightish sienna, We're leaving leaving some white, unpainted. Just touching this here. And then we can use some darker variety. I've also ordered 50 sheets of um, half imperial, 140 pounds Bockingford. It's not a lot more expensive than, than than this, which is a lighter, smoother paper. But the Bockingford is rough. I haven't seen it yet. It hasn't been delivered. So I've got plenty to demonstrate on when we get through Christmas. Excuse me, I'll well, have a drink of tea. I want to start to do my landscape now. Oh, gonna, that tree's got to be on some sort of bank. Oh, we just get the texture going. It's a bit darker on the top there. I could use burnt umber, but Burnt umber is not that much different than using burnt sienna with a bit of, bit of grey in it. Then nice and neat uh, sienna. It's a nice, nice red, rich red. Okay, that's a bit of a hedgy row, and we can have some darker. 
it's, it's lovely using just a couple of colours. Uh, come across, across here. Because you have to make all your tones with just the three colours, three or four colours. It's a good discipline. Just try to make a different dry brush. But this paper's not that good for dry brush. Huh? But anyway, we'll see how we go when we get the Royal Sienna. I mean, the Royal Sienna, the Bockingford. So we'll, we'll put in some, oh, some landscape there. So this is just a bit of, bit of the grassy stuff. Grassy stuff, that's a technical term by the way. And then we have a bit of a uh, nice rich warmer colour coming up there. And a bit, bit, bit of grey in there, a bit of Payne's grey. Just, just brightening it up. It's just giving a bit of warmth. Now we've got a hole through the, the gate there, so I will put that in, and we'll we'll show some grass poking through. So this is uh, a bit of a bank here. We're changing the shape of the, uh, the landscape. Now my tree is going to come up there, so I, I wanted quite a darkish tree there. I uh, will just now I'm trying to show this windswept. Some brush, hedgerow, coming along there. Here's my little rigger for that. Just a bit of texture up, a bit of shadow there.
Yeah, that looks a bit windscreen spread, doesn't it? And we put some, uh, some, big, some small solid trees coming up here in the background. I don't know what it is about burnt sienna, it just suits my temperament, I think. I'm just showing some scrubby brush trees, brushy trees. It's a little bit of blue in it. Same here. Get some going in across here. As they show up a bit on that horizon, can also use ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Gives a rich, dark, greeny sort of. Just a bit of bit of texture along there. We'll uh, do something here. And a bit of texturing in here. All right. Okay. That's looking quite cold. It's a little bit more on these right okay right let's with my um, inch flat now now. I'm going to put in the fence. Us Brits can't go without our cups of tea. Alan, Alan Owen told me a lovely story on email. Earlier in the week, that when he was in, a, in a, a group, an art group, and he was demonstrating. He's, he's older than me, and they thought he was going to not last the pace of the demonstrations and they kept making him cups of tea keep him going but he did collapse but I'm glad he's he's okay if you haven't watched his um, demonstrations of how to paint like sea or western and seagull they are a joy to watch I'm pleased to be able to recommend him I love his work and him that's put me on to the same because Ted Weston used used sables to get the shape of the tree. Is this the, the hake is great? I can. There's no problem really. But but sometimes you just want it a bit heavier, and the hake is a bit hit and miss. But although I'm not bothered about being hit and miss. Anything that makes makes your paintings look spontaneous. All right, there we go. And then that one. Oh. All right, please bring out some of there. Same here. Right, that'll, that'll do, let that go. Mm -hmm. A little bit higher there. Mm 
nothing more than that really. <coughs> now we're going to put the river in, or the stream. Norfolk is a, is a wonderful county for painting. I love flat landscapes anyway. It's why I paint the coast of Essex so much. I just love the salt marshes and the way you can texture to show the shapes of the of the land. Right. So I'll use a uh, ultramarine. Well, the three colours: Payne's grey, ultramarine, and, and burnt sienna. So I will just coming in there. Going to nothing there. And then to show some foliage in there. Let's just dry the brush a little bit and just Show a raggedy edge there. I don't want this uh, looking too mechanical. Right, okay. We got a bit dark on, on, the, on the shadow side of this. Now we've got a large area here to texture. We don't want to do too much here. Just want to show just the shape of of the landscape. Sticking up. Now I can go in with some darker shadows in that in a minute. Show some some bluey grey shadows. Trying to do a bit of dry brush in this as well. Dry brush. Delicate. This, this is a five minute painting, I have to say. It'll take a bit longer than uh, the 20 minutes I tried to do them in, but you can't do this amount of detail in now. Uh, in a few minutes, yeah. You have to spend some time doing it. And we'll just show the edge of that. got a lot going on here so we'll uh,
Here's a look going on here. Just disguise, that was a bit obvious so was uh, the shape of that bank. Alright, let's uh, get with our rigger. Do these sort of I can scrape any of that out there. Should have done that when it was wet. I'm not going to resort to uh, gouache with this one, I'll just. Persevere with this. We'll do some shadows in a minute. Some uh, some fronds going up here. Just flicks with all parts of the the rig. I'm not just using the the tip. I'm using the edge, <laughs> the the uh, ferrule, to get these bits of texture in. Right, let's pick a little bit of uh, a bit of shadow in there now. Here and there, just gentle. Using a, a, a nylon, a number six nylon, just to show undulations in the ground and shadow there. Put it in the mountain in a minute and we'll uh, see what it looks like. Uh, just a bit of grey blue along here. Just, just tinting. Not doing anything in uh, particular here. Just so something's been along there. Right, okay, let's uh, 
<coughs> put a figure in there. Slightly red, just so it shows, but not heavy on. Let's just have a Oh, I will uh, put his footprints in. I mean, I'm here. It's a bit darker there, I think. Sign that and see what it looks like in a mount. You can get carried away with all the uh, the glasses and overdo it. It's no when to leave it alone, really. I can't say I've been a great example of it, but we'll have a look at it. It's, in, it's totally in my own style, my own way of painting. I can't think of anything I want to add to that really. Let's just zoom in, have a look at our little figure. Just very simple. Everything in this is very simple. It's just knowing when to leave off thus far and no further. There. The tree has been swept on this flat landscape distance. Back here, over there, and the sky. Right, let's uh, zoom out and give you another look at that. There you are, the winter scene in Norfolk, the Norfolk landscape. I'm not sure if the river is dark enough. Let's just go over it with a slightly darker, see if that makes any difference. One that uh, just showing on that reflex reflection there. I'm not sure if that really improves it. But enough. Right, I think it looks okay. Um, the river sort of, the stream sort of vanishes in here, but uh, goes up behind this bit of a bank there. Right, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Bye bye.